This week on the show, Mercari adds ChatGPT to their arsenal, while Etsy removes their old seller app from theirs. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to episode number 196 of the Galaxy CD's Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. My name is Ryan, and I will be your host. We've got a little bit of reselling news this week and a very small handful of what sold items and an update on some news we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully this finds you well, and uh, let's just dive right in. News updates. So first up, uh, chat GPT and AI is everywhere. And maybe it's just because I'm really into it. And the uh, YouTube algorithm has figured that out because it is sending <laughs> tons of open AI and chat GPT and just general AI stuff into my recommended feed. But this popped up uh, over on payments.com. And again, I will link as always to these articles in the show notes and the video description below. But Mercari is adding a chat GPT powered shopping assistance, assistant rather, to their marketplace platform. Mercari has added a chat GPT powered shopping assistance to its marketplace platform for secondhand items with the new Merchat AI, which is now available in beta across the US. Customers can engage in real time conversations with the shopping assistant and receive product recommendations based on their chat prompts. Mercari said in a Tuesday, April 18th press release, there are links to the beta in this article. So if you wanna check that out in more detail, uh, links of course will be down below. Merchat AI marks an exciting turning point in the evolution of secondhand shopping. Mercari US CEO, John Lagerling said in the release with this technology, he said, we're leveraging the transformative power of artificial intelligence to make it easier for Americans to shop and explore Mercari's extensive marketplace. As payments reported on March 15th, ChatGPT's intuitive chat-based interface allows users to interact with the ever-growing language model. Its creator, OpenAI, is building and push the boundaries of the data set it's being traded on, traded, trained on, I should say. So this is kind of a, a little bit of a symbiotic relationship. Uh, OpenAI, who is the, the developer of GPT-4, I believe it's called, and ChatGPT, gets some data from Mercari and how apparently users are prompting the system while Mercari gets the benefits of the AI recommendation system. So um, kind of a cool thing. General Motors VP Scott Miller said on March 10th that he thought chat GPT is going to be in everything. With this new Merchat AI, customers can log into the site, engage the shopping assistant in natural conversation answer questions about their needs and then receive a series of recommendations according to the press release. For example, they say customers might ask the shopping assistants to suggest a Mother's Day gift, find an item that's part of a new trend, find a specific item, suggest attire for a particular occasion or discover home decor items that reflect a particular style, the release said. We anticipate that generated generative AI, man, I can't talk today. <laughs> Uh, we'll also unlock more opportunities to iterate on our customers' experience, along with additional ways to make the resale experience even more appealing to buyers and sellers. Uh, several other retail ap applications of generative AI technology have been announced in recent weeks. The article points out, for example, Klarna is working with OpenAI to use ChatGPT as a personal shopping assistant that will enable users to ask the platform for shopping advice and receive product recommendations, along with Shink's links to shop for those products. Uh, Expedia is also using ChatGPT to power an in-app travel planning experience in which the AI tool will provide recommendations on places to go, where to stay, how to get around, and what to see and do. So there's a lot of, uh, controversy might be a strong word about uh, AI and it's, I guess it's potential to end life on earth if it gets totally out of control, Terminator style, uh, Skynet, or if you will, but there are a lot of really great, potentially improving people's lives situations where AI could be very useful. So hopefully this is one of them. I have not yet checked it out. If I do, I will uh, update you on what I think of it going forward, but it's not something I've used yet. Speaking of things that I have used, however, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that um, Pirate Ship had integrated with PayPal 
for shipping. And I told you I would update you once I had an order on Bonanza, who uses PayPal for all their payments. And I finally had one this week. And Pirate Ship did update immediately to PayPal. It sent the tracking number over and PayPal marked the item as shipped within PayPal, but that information did not then transfer on to Bonanza. So if you are a Bonanza seller and you use Pirate Ship, the integration with PayPal will clear it on PayPal, but it will not actually clear it, at least not yet. Uh, in my personal experience on Bonanza, you still have to manually go in and mark that item shipped. So be aware of that if you are a user of those two services. A few weeks ago, we also talked about Mercari adding their own sort of media mail process. Um, part of that article also mentioned, which I didn't really get into, that they were going to add a low cost shipping option for trading cards with tracking. That has now been announced. Mercari announced the availability of USPS First Class Envelopes, a shipping option for sellers of trading cards that provides a form of tracking. This is, of course, similar to eBay's standard envelopes. In an email to sellers on Monday, Mercari said USPS First Class Envelopes is a prepaid label option exclusively for trading cards. Quote, this low-cost shipping label includes tracking and Mercari shipping protection up to $20. $20. So this is not for your big high dollar trading cards. This is for kind of low to moderately priced trading cards, only up to $20. So be aware of that. So you can save money with peace of mind and first class envelopes are easy to ship. Just drop it in the mailbox or at the post office and you're good to go. They did note, Mercari did, that you may need to update your Mercari app to see this new shipping option. Sellers familiar? This article says with the eBay standard envelope, we'll know that the tracking that comes with Mercari's new offering and tracking through Mercari is included directly on the order status page, but that tracking is not available on the USPS website. Sellers are advised to familiarize themselves with USPS first class envelopes on the Mercari website. This of course comes on the heels of them announcing their media mail update in late March. So more happenings over at Mercari. They are very busy over there. After a long while where there were really not a lot of changes, they did make some category updates. I don't know what that was, maybe six months ago, but they're now really diving into some stuff to try to enhance both the seller and the buyer experience in terms of shipping and with this new ChatGPT AI recommendation system. So kudos to Mercari for getting up into uh, some new improvements. Speaking of new improvements, some time ago, Etsy introduced a new seller app. Uh, apparently they were so dissatisfied with their old seller app that rather than just try to update that, they created a whole new one. It is arguably a much better app than the previous one. There are still some things I don't think it does quite as well as the old one, but that's not gonna matter much longer because this article on e-commerce Byte says Etsy is shutting down the old version of its mobile selling app. They're starting to shut it down. It announced on Tuesday, they had launched their new app last summer, built from the ground up, but it continued to make the old app available as it worked on adding new functionality to the new app. And I have noticed over the last month or so, there have been a lot of updates to the new Etsy seller app. If you're watching on YouTube and you use that app, you can let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the new one versus the old one. Or of course, if you're listening to the pod, you can email me at galaxycds at gmail.com or DM me over on Instagram at galaxycdsrocks. Some sellers, they say, will no longer have access to the sell on Etsy app starting today as we begin to shut down the app they announced on April 18th. By May 23rd of this year, the old app will no longer be accessible in the app and Google Play stores according to the announcement. Uh, new features Etsy added to the new Etsy seller app since its launch last July include new tabs for home, messages, listings, and more. It continues to work on new functionality, including the following, editing and managing your listing variations, manage your shop announcements, which would be really handy, share your listings directly to Instagram posts and stories, which would also be very cool. Sellers discussed the new app in the Etsy discussion board thread in late March with some preferring to use Etsy through their phone's browser and others preferring the app, such as the seller who said they can upload photos and videos directly from their mobile device into listings using the new app without having to convert to required sizing parameters. So lots going on over there at Etsy with their app. Uh, if you are a user of the old app, Unfortunately, uh, the time is coming quite quickly. May 23rd, that old app is going away and you'll have to switch over to the new one. Etsy also posted this week 
a notice on how they're going to keep Etsy, quote, safe and unique in 2023. Corinne is the lead trust and safety team member, and her team works to protect the marketplace by enforcing our house rules and combating fraud. We're committed, she said, to keeping Etsy special, unique, and safe as our community grows, which is why we are currently planning to, in, again, invest over $50 million in our trust and safety efforts in 2023. I believe they invested th that same amount last year. So they are committing a fairly significant amount of money to make the Etsy site better, they say, for both buyers and sellers. We've also heard from you how important policy enforcement on Etsy is. Part of that is a lot of sellers squawking about the amount of counterfeit and not handmade, kind of the Chinese knockoff stuff that has been proliferating on Etsy. This year, they say some of our key areas of focus will include making it clear what can and can't be sold on Etsy and enforcing our policies so we can better highlight the special, unique, and well-crafted items that you sell. Removing counterfeit items and listings that don't follow our handmade policy. To do this, they plan to expand and improve the accuracy of the automated technology they use to quickly identify and remove those listings. While also, they say, investing in teams and people who review those violations. They also want to make it easier for sellers to appeal policy decisions and get a quick resolution. Earlier this year, they launched updated appeals center where sellers can ask the trust and safety team to review and reconsider, reconsider eligible account suspensions. Since introducing this new process, they've seen a 17% increase in seller satisfaction with that process. Communicating quickly and transparently with shops that violate our policies so they know what actions we're taking and why. We'll also work to proactively share more education to help sellers better understand Etsy's policies. That is an area I have heard complaints from sellers in the past where their account gets suspended and they just don't have any idea why because Etsy has been fairly poor at communicating. They just shut you down. So hopefully this is going to improve. And they also want to make it easier for sellers to review and update their personal and business information so they can keep the community safe and reduce fraud. A lot of that is going to probably revolve around things like asking again for your driver's license information and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> uh, not always stuff that sellers are going to be particularly thrilled about, but Etsy feels that that makes the marketplace a little safer. They did also have a report on what they did in 2022. You can read the full report by clicking the link in this article, but they do highlight a couple of things here. They invested in new automated technology to help them remove more than four times as many listings for violating their handmade policy in 2022 versus the previous year. They made it easier for Etsy sellers and brands to report alleged intellectual property violations, uh, something that happened to me. <laughs> uh, I had talked about back uh, during the Christmas season about uh, doing the print-on-demand t-shirts, and a couple of the t-shirts that I made were based on the Fortnite game, and I got a uh, IP notice from Etsy via via Etsy from Epic Games that uh, those were intellectual property violations, and I had to take those down, which was unfortunate because they were really, really good sellers. Uh, but I get it. it; it is what it is. I made a little bit of money at Christmas, and we have moved on. I am still doing print on demand. It has really, really slowed down for me. I actually haven't done any new designs for a while because I've been sourcing again, but it's still providing a little bit of extra income, and we'll see what it does as we get closer to the actual holiday season. Uh, they note that fewer cases were opened in 2022, and they were resolved more quickly. Cases were resolved by their team, they say, in just 14 hours on average. That's down from around four and a half days in 2021, so that is a massive improvement. They say they've also invested in support teams to help sellers get the help they need when they need it. They launched a new live support option like live chat, which I actually used. I talked about, it was either last week or two weeks ago, I talked about Etsy's new offer system that is not quite ready for prime time. And the issue I was having, I asked for some assistance using their live chat. And I had really, frankly, a very good experience with whoever was on the other end of that chat. So hat tip to Etsy for adding that functionality. I was answered very quickly and we worked through the issue to discover what the problem was. So it was a it was a really good support experience. So again, hat tip to Etsy for that. Uh, as of November 2022, any Etsy seller with a listing has access to 24-7 live chat in Etsy's help center for most support topics. 
They say over the next few months, they'll continue to share updates on the other progress that they're making together. So again, good news over at Etsy. They're moving forward with making their site better, at least they think, for both buyers and sellers. So that's about it on the news front. It really wasn't all that busy, but this, again, the big news probably for me is the Mercari chat GPT integration. That is really interesting stuff. Um, I may, I'm not, I don't buy much on Mercari. I've bought, I think two pairs of shoes, <laughs> uh, but I may go check that out just to see how it works. Cause I have not personally messed with the chat GPT thing at all. If you have, again, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know down in the comments. With that out of the way, let's get into just a few what sold items from last week. So as I mentioned, I did have a sale on Bonanza. It's not in this recap, but this was another week where I did have transactions on all four of the platforms that I sell on. I did have somebody reach out to me on Instagram asking about cross posting. And again, I will remind everyone, I personally use List perfectly. There is an affiliate link for that down in the video description and the show notes below. If you're inclined to do cross posting, as I've said on previous episodes, I cannot recommend List perfectly highly enough. It is a fantastic tool. It allows me to do all of these cross listings that I choose to do in a very efficient manner. I absolutely love it. It more than pays for itself, usually within a couple of days. So it's a, a fantastic service. Again, if you'd like to give it a shot, you can save 30% off of your first month's trial of List Perfectly by using the affiliate link down below or just going to List Perfectly and using the promo code GALAXY. With that said, uh, a couple of sales here. This first one, a Mercari sale. I, I picked these up on Thursday, listed them Friday morning and sold them Friday afternoon. So this didn't take any time at all. This was a set of playing cards from Saab, the automotive company. It came in a nice cardboard box. The backs of the cards all had photos of various cars and various technology and things that they used to produce those cars. Really cool set, no date on it. I assume it was probably 90s or early 2000s era. I paid 50 cents at an estate sale for this deck of cards and sold them for $23 with free shipping over on Mercari. Again, on Mercari, I include the shipping price in my price, so it was already accounted for. These were listed for like $17 plus shipping on eBay. So a really nice and very, very quick flip. A lot of automotive nostalgia memorabilia type stuff does sell pretty well. I've sold old like GM like bolt catalogs from the fifties and just random stuff for anywhere from 10 to $12. So don't overlook automotive memorabilia, advertising stuff and so on when you're out at the sales. Uh, this item over on eBay, Stolen Lightning, The Social Theory of Magic by Daniel O'Keefe. It was a 1983 first printing paperback by Vintage Paperbacks or Vintage Press, I think it is. I had it listed for $22.99 plus shipping or best offer. I received an offer of $20. I own it for about three and a half cents. So I went ahead and sold it. So might be one to be on the lookout if you're for if you're inclined to look at books. You may recall if you're a long time listener or viewer of the show that a couple of summers ago, gosh, it might be three summers ago now, I bought a massive, massive collection of CDs and they continue to sell at a fairly decent pace. A lot of them are very inexpensive, sub $10 CDs, but I had like 8,000 of them. So it's all added up to be a fairly significant amount of money. I had one buyer that bought a uh, four old punk CDs. So that's what you can see on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, Lolly and the Chones, the Eggs, the Sewer Grooves, and the No Talents. So four CDs that total went for $51.71 with free shipping. These are old enough that they were still in my old free shipping, which I mentioned last week. I will be changing soon, probably at the end of this month. I'm gonna transfer all of that stuff over to paid shipping, but these went for $51.71 with free shipping and I own them for probably a grand total of 30 or 32 cents. And I think this is the last item for today. And this was another super quick flip. I bought this item also on Thursday, listed it Friday morning and sold it Saturday afternoon. So maybe 36 hours after having listed it, this item sold. 
uh, old vintage cookbook, Greek Cookery by Nicholas Salamentes from 1959. This book, I think, was originally written maybe in the 30s or 40s. It had subsequent printings. This particular one was a 1956 copyright revised edition with a 1959 printing date. They were selling pretty consistently from $45 to about $65, depending on their age. I listed this one for $54.99 plus shipping and received an offer Saturday afternoon for $50, which I went ahead and took. I bought this book for a dollar. So <laughs> uh, those are the fun ones. Um, a lot of the stuff that I bought over this past few days I'll be working on as we get into this week. I've got... I probably bought a couple of hundred books over the two full days of sourcing. If you follow me over on Instagram, uh, I did post that I had been out for a couple of days. I still managed to do, I think, 105 listings this week, this past week. This coming week probably won't get that many because I'm going to go sourcing at least one day, maybe two. And I also, uh, if you're not a longtime listener to the show, this may be news to you, but I still do dealer trade drives for a Volkswagen store, and they are sending me this week to Chicago to pick up a car. So I'm going to lose an entire day of listing, uh, driving and listening to reselling podcasts. <laughs> uh, so that should be a good day. It'll be fun to get out of the house and uh, make a drive to Chicago and maybe get some Chicago style pizza or something while I'm up there. So that should be fun. I'll give you an update on that in next week's episode. So again, uh, as always, I appreciate you spending a little bit of your time here. If you liked what you heard or saw today, please do me a favor. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that thumbs up button. If you're not a follower of the podcast or a subscriber to the YouTube channel, please consider doing that as well. With that said, I hope you're all having a great week. And now it's time to sell. Thanks, guys. You have been listening to the Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you again next time.